In the Footsteps of Crazy Horse by Joseph Marshall the Third, Chapter One, Rosebud Sioux Indian Reservation. Jimmy McLean walked among the buffalo berry thickets along the smoking Earth River. It was warm afternoon in late May. School's done for the week and almost for the year. Jimmy was glad of that. He was tired of being teased for having blue eyes. The river cut through the valley below the town of Cold River. Cold River was on the northern edge of the, of the Rosebud Sioux Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Jimmy lived with his parents in a modular house on the east side. That was okay, but it was not okay that he lived two blocks from Cold River Public School. He hated school. Corky Bryn and Jesse Littlehorse were two of the reasons. Maybe they were the only reasons. No, he didn't like math or P.E. either. In P.E. he had to hold hands with a girl. It was a game everyone had to play, but holding hands with a girl, that was embarrassing. Corky teased him about it, and so did Jesse. Corky was white, and Jesse was Lakota. They didn't like each other, but they seemed to bond over teasing Jimmy. Jimmy had blue eyes and light brown hair. Other Lakota children had black hair, brown skin, and brown eyes. They had family names like Little Horse, Turning Bear, Bisonet, or Black Wolf. This was another reason for Corky and Jesse to tease him. McLean was a white name. It was his other grandfather's name, a man he had never met. Angus McLean was his dad's dad. His mom was Anne, and her last name was High Eagle, but now she was Anne McLean, and Jimmy's dad was James McLean Sr. No one called him Jimmy. James Sr. was a half Lakota, half white. His hair was dark brown, and his skin was a bit lighter than most Lakota's people, uh, Lok P Lakota peoples, but his eyes were brown. Jimmy was James McLean Jr., his, his dad's mom was Madeline Bear from Pine Ridge Reservation in the western part of the state. It all meant, as his mom explained, that there were three parts of Jimmy were Lakota and one part was white. He was part Scottish, to be exact. The problem is, Anne McLean would say, your three, or three Lakota parts are, are all hidden inside. Your one white part is on the outside. Jimmy understood what she meant, but it didn't make sense or didn't make him feel any better. He was the main reason Corky and Jesse teased him. You're just an Indian pretending to be white, was what Corky liked to say. Who ever heard of a Lakota with blue eyes and a name like McLean, Jesse would say. Jimmy's usual replay was always infuriated Jesse even more. Malakota, yellow, he would yell, which meant I am Lakota, in Lakota. Jesse did not understand or speak Lakota. According to Jesse, a blue-eyed Lakota was strange, and, and one who spoke Lakota was even stranger. Jimmy never fought because he was 11 and Jesse was 12 and bigger. Corky was bigger than Jesse, so every argument with either of them was lost uh, because it made Jimmy feel small and weak. Now he found refuge again in the trees and thickets in, by the smoking earth river, here the trees accepted him just the way he was, blue eyes and all. So did the grasses and the birds and the rabbits. Here by the river, he was just a boy. On Saturday morning, Jimmy awoke to the sound of his grandfather, Niles' voice. He hurried to the bathroom to splash water on his face. In the kitchen, he found his parents and Grandpa Niles having coffee and, and talking in English. Sometimes they spoke Lakota, but not this morning. "'Hey, sleepyhead,' James called out to his son. "'I thought you were going to snore all morning.' James was in the dark blue uniform. He was a tribal police officer and sometimes worked on Saturdays. Today was one of those sometimes. Jimmy let his dad rumple his hair. Hey, Grandpa, he said as he hugged his mom. He was a head start teacher and did not always work on Saturdays. What's the haps? Niles High Eagle Brown or Niles High Eagle's brown face was deep had deep creases. He was tall and his hair was long and black, sprinkled with gray. He always wore it in a single braid. A wide smile beamed from for his grandson. Got some chores, he said, in a strong, soft voice. Means riding horses, though. I know you don't like to do that. Who told you that? Jimmy teased back. I was born riding horses. It was his favorite thing to do. Well, next to being with his grandma or grandpa. A meadow lark, answered Grandpa Niles. Just yesterday, one one told me that. Mom and Dad say as soon as you or as soon as you have breakfast and get ready, we can go. I'm not hungry, Jimmy said. I'll be ready in a sec. 
There will be breakfast waiting for you, Anne McLean said. Take a shower, get dressed, get some clothes for overnight. You're not leaving this house without breakfast. Jimmy nodded and hurried away to his room. There was no arguing with his mom when she used that voice or that tone of voice. Anyway, he was spending the night with Grandpa Niles and Grandma Sarah. They lived ten miles out of town on a small horse ranch. Jimmy smiled ear to ear, and he loped across the prairie with his Grandpa Niles. He was riding Little Warrior, a small but sturdy buckskin quarter horse. Grandpa was on the on Dancer, a muscular bay quarter horse stallion. Grandpa Niles had a small herd of horses. There was the stallion, three mares, their colts, and two gelding for riding. Little Warrior was a gelding. Their chore was checking Grandpa Niles' twelve miles of fences. Jimmy knew Grandpa Niles hated barbed wire, but it did keep the neighbor's cattle out of the horse pasture, so it was important to check the fences regularly, just in case there were breaks or any loose wire. They stopped along Horse Creek, which flowed into the Smoking Earth River. Grandpa wanted to rest the chores and let them graze. Besides, it was always good to relax in the shade of some big, tall cottonwood trees. Jimmy took a long stick and poked around in the grasses before he sat down. It was a way to scare away the snakes. Grandpa had taught him that. Sitting against the tree in the giant cottonwood tree... Uh, they listened to the creek gurgling and watched the horses munch on grass. This was the sort of thing Jimmy wanted to do for the rest of his life. So them boys been teasing you again, Grandpa asked suddenly. Jimmy nodded. Yeah. Well, drawled Grandpa Niles, with a blade of grass between his teeth, what's their main problem? I don't know, Jimmy shrugged. They say I got, or they say I'm not Lakota. Why? Because your skin is light and you have blue eyes? Jimmy shrugged again. Yeah, I guess so. I think I can settle this whole issue once and for all, declared Grandpa Niles. Jimmy perked up. You gonna beat them up? He could he could almost see that. No, Grandpa replied with a chuckle. I don't think we can change them boys, but we might be able to change how you look at things. What do you mean, Grandpa? Well, the answer to the question is a long one. It means you and me are going on a trip soon, as school is out. Are you up for that? Jimmy sat up straight. It was too good to be true. You mean, like, camping? Yeah, there'll be some camping, a lot of driving, and seeing some interesting but important places. Jimmy could not believe his ears. He couldn't wait. One more thing, Grandpa added. You remember the stories about Crazy Horse, don't you? Yeah, you told me he was the greatest Lakota warrior a long time ago. Did I tell you what he looked like? Jimmy shook his head. No, I don't think so. Well, his Grandpa said, let me show you what he looked like. Let's go down to the creek. Puzzled, Jimmy followed his grandpa. Now, Grandpa Niles, said Grandpa Niles, kneeling carefully at the edge of the bank, look into the water. Jimmy looked down, but all he could see were their reflections. Grandpa pointed at Jimmy's. What do you see there? he asked. Me. That's me, Grandpa. Are you sure? I could swear that's Crazy Horse when he was your age, though his hair was probably a bit longer. Jimmy was still puzzled, but now he was curious, too. For reals? Yeah, my great-grandfather, your great-great-grandfather, was born in 1860. He saw Crazy Horse, as close as you are to me. He said Crazy Horse had light skin like you and brown hair like you. He didn't have blue eyes, but some boys teased him, too. Jimmy stared at his own reflection in the water. No way, he thought. I don't look like Crazy Horse. Yeah, Grandpa sighed, as if he had read Jimmy's thoughts. I could swear that's young Crazy Horse looking at me. Of course, when he was a boy, they called him Light Hair. Jimmy couldn't take his eyes off his own face looking back at him. Tell you what, Grandpa Miles continued, now that you have some idea of what he looked like, want to go see where he lived and played and hunted and all that stuff? Jimmy looked at his grandpa and smiled. <laughs>